hip hop started out with Dior. When he was on the stage, you had to scream, give me more. Give me more. He had it in his bones, it was buried in his flesh. So you knew when he was fit, it'd be hot to die. You see, that. me without V is like a steak with no cheese. A future with no leader, a smile with no teeth. For every laugh, for every hug, I hold it in my heart. Cause that's the only way I know we'll never be apart. And for the women in his life, you knew that he would bless us. Made us feel like queens when in his presence for a second. I'm talking about a legacy, not sure you're really hearing me. But Dior was a blessing and I'm blessed to have his energy. You know we really miss you, D. Do this in your memory. Every day's a blessing and the trials are just a testing. I thank you for the lessons. Made me a better person. There'll never be a second. I'm thankful for your essence. Dio, he tell you Mr. Magic Mike, Mr. Puerto Rico, booyah cut up on the mic. If you never heard him, you missed an angel, humble and low key. The stage couldn't tame him. He was oh so lovable, honest almost to a fall. Every time he talked to you, you knew what he was talking about. Mr. Motivational, always on that focus tip. Do you on the stage? Yeah, you knew that he was killing it. He liked you, he loved you, he loved you, you cherish it. From lyric camp to verses, he stayed up in the midst of it. Push you to go harder, fight a little stronger. Anything worth having? It's gonna take your all up. He made me understand that I'm always gonna have that. Nothing is for granted. Do you over such a class act? Told me about my ABCs and made me such an addict. His memories are classic. Make sure we always pass that. Gentlemen, welcome to Lyric Ave TV, Richmond VA's own poetry-based variety show. And now we'll welcome your executive producer and host, Mr. Craig The Rock Watson! Welcome to Lyric Ave TV. It's a poetry-based variety show, and what you just witnessed was the your state of mind. And I told him the first thing that I would do going forward is always acknowledge the true host of the Lyric Ave show, Mr. Gerard Dior Struthers. Please make some noise for Gerard Struthers. We'll get started. We had a season, our 10th season, at the Hippodrome Theater. And at the Hippodrome Theater is an awesome, awesome venue. You definitely have to check it out, but Lyric Ave had his 10th season, and if you missed it, it's okay, because that's why I'm here. I'm gonna take you through a journey of our 10th season, and you might get some live performances as well, but let's take a look at a couple of performances from the Lyric Ave 10th season at the Hippodrome Theater. First, we have Mr. Jay Gott with a performance, a spoken word poetry performance, and next, we have Mr. Lee Narrator Jones with another poetry performance. So ladies and gentlemen, take it to the 10th season, Lyric Ave TV. Sometimes I wish I could call him so I can hear our voices. And sometimes I wish I could call him so he can help me with life choices. You see, whenever he needed anything, I was a call away. And I ain't gonna lie, I didn't give him a call a day, but Whenever he needed anything, I was there 100% all the way. I just wished he lived long enough to hear this poem he even saw this day. 
And he ain't had to speak my language to understand what I'm saying. And what I'm saying is I love that man as much as a son could love a father. I love my earthly father as much as I love my heavenly father because they both gave me life. They guided me through hard time and even gave me might. They blessed me with the vision to see this is bigger than me. They gave me sight. And I ain't even going to start lying because even in my dark times, they gave me light. See, my pops ain't have much, but he had enough. He was a Navy man, which made this water sign newborn grow into a ladies man. He wasn't committed to much, not even to me. And as I look back on our friendship, I can evenly see that he spread his love equally to me. And as I'm weak and I see in this hard time of grief and the need, I feel his presence. I hear his voice whispering, speaking to me. So I never give up. And as soft as his voice was, it was still as powerful as thunder rumbling and breaking the foundation of any mansion. And with that, this man is handling his business and dismantling the negativity the people are bringing to me. Because positive thoughts bring positive actions, which brings positive outcome. And with all this positive energy entering into me, all I can see is negative energy and old enemies entering into my life. And don't get me wrong, it's not hindering my life. This is just a test to see what I got left, to see if I can handle his death, to see if I can handle the grief, but I ain't even grieved yet. And since he physically left, it feels like I ain't even <sighs> breathed yet. And it's like I can still feel his presence. It's like his soul ain't even leave yet. And all I can hear is son never give up. And it's, <sighs> ooh. All I can hear is son never give up. And with that force and drive behind me, I can care less who in line in front of behind me. And being up here reminds me of how much I miss the mic. And speaking on the subject reminds me of how much I miss the hype of seeing my dad. You see, liquor and nicotine is what ruined him. It's crazy because I'm attracted to cancers, but cancer is what consumed him. Let me give you a visual. The shit was so sore. His liver was no more. He had cancer blocking his esophagus and was stopping me from watching this his unseen fate. And all I could say is dad never give up. And those five days that I was by his side, that's all I could say to him. And every day I gave to him encouragement. And every night I prayed to him, but that didn't help. But that's another piece for another time. But what's giving me peace for my mind is right now, I hear my pop saying, son, never give up. So what I won't do is I won't ever give up. I won't ever give up. Please welcome to the stage, narrator. Powder makes you hyper, reefer makes you calm, cigarettes give you cancer, woo-woos make you numb. What you niggas know about the dirty south? It was 1995. I remember it like yesterday, goody my blasting inside my headphones on a project stoop where I closed my eyes and pretend I was living a rap video. I was a baller. My sock bowls with crack rock, four pound pistol, sagging my jeans, razor blade under my tongue like Nas, my block on lock, me serving them fiends, I was a hustler. Smack peddler, street pharmacist, regular doctor feel good in the hood, depending on their symptoms, is how I supply the sick. See, when Rick would scratch just like he had fleas, I'd put him at ease with an eight ball of hard, and Trixie had insomnia, but a pill of heroin always made her nod, and Josh smoked loud for his glaucoma, and Wesley sniffed white to counteract narcolepsy, and I was their god, father, prophet, well, god, father, profiting off their addiction. See, malpractice suits don't exist in this hell, but my guilty conscience doing time in my brain cells was enough. So I left that lifestyle behind. Because when I waited on the scale, 28 grams of poison doesn't really equate to an ounce of respect. And 16 ounces of shake is a pound parallel to shaking hands with death. And 36 ounces is a key to anything but success. So before it led to my arrest, on my client's arrest cardiac, I cleaned up my act and I never looked back in these days. I earn a respectable wage. I'm a certified med technician and an assistant living home for those with autism, cripples, schizos, some with dementia and Alzheimer's, others, hell, they're just old. And now I have a license to nurse their ailments. I serve legal medications, ointments, and inhalants. I soothe diabetics with insulin injections, order and discontinue prescriptions. And the sweetest part about my job, I make a difference. I make a difference, well at least I thought I did in the beginning, till I researched and realized under the table drugs are overrated, over the counter drugs are underestimated, more people overdose nowadays and get high on what the DEA labels doctor prescribed. Cause smoking joints never led to joint pain like the controlled substances I distribute in vain, in vain. 
by mouth, ear drops, eye drops, nasal sprays. We've done away with holistic methods led astray by wonder drugs like Dilantin that's supposed to treat seizures with side effects like headaches, constipation, heavy bleeding, nervousness, increased urination, diarrhea, unusual eye movement, excessive hair growth, but at least you stop the shakes unless you're misdiagnosed. My doped up patients remind me of zombies. And our children, they used to play football outside and they cooped up in the house with PSPs with labels smacked on them like ADD, ADHD, but they're SOS, crying out for help. All they need is attention, hug, and, and a leather belt. And, and I felt like getting CPR certified. I learned to use blood pressure pumps and stethoscopes would somehow save lives. And I know I'm no longer on the block like 95, traded in my dicky suits and Tim boots for some scrubs, but from time to time, I stick myself with an EpiPen because I swear, I swear I'm the one that's going nuts. I mean, there's no cops, no guns when I draw blood, no judge here to stop my hand to hands, but somehow, y'all, I feel like I'm still pushing drugs. And we're back. We thank you for checking in on what powerful performances by Mr. Jay Gott and narrator. I mean, great performances. What do you think? I have Miss Tisha Lassane with me, which is a Lyric Ave cast member. Hi, Tisha. Hey. Are you glad to be on Lyric Ave TV? Absolutely. All right. Well, since you give me a lot of one word answers, I'm going to drive this ship. And I'm going to ask you a couple questions about those performances uh, and a couple of your castmates. Let's start with uh, Jay Gott and that performance, Never Give Up. Never give up. Um, it was very, very powerful because he was referring to his relationship with his dad. And, you know, for anybody, especially a man, to be able to look to their father like that, I think that's just something that can drive home for a lot of people. So it was very inspirational. Wow, wow. I hope you felt the same way. And then let's talk about, uh, he's been riding with us for a long time, Lee, narrator Jones, who always has a great job of telling stories, using spoken word, poetry, and just, uh, just connecting uh, a great message that push it, talking about the differences of, you know, the drug game and how it's not too much different from what the uh, pharmaceutical companies are out there doing. Let's, let's see what you have to say about that. Well, narrator is a very, um, very inspirational um, poet as well because he's always bring his politics into his artwork and he gives it to you from a different insight. So by him working on both sides of pushing drugs on both sides is, um, you know, it's kind of good to get it from him because it, that's like a first-hand experience and it makes you see things a little bit differently. Well, that's what we do right here at Lyric Ave TV. You might see a lot of those other reality TV shows, but we're going to give you some that's quality entertainment. And so we hope you enjoy those performances, but maybe poetry and, you know, being conscious is not your thing. We understand. It's okay. Uh, we also have uh, comical skits we do. Most people like to say, like, what is it, uh, In Living Color and, you know, the Dave Chappelle Show, but we're Lyric Ave TV, and we got a comedy sketch for you. It's called The Fiscal Clip. The Fiscal Clip. You remember that skit? Yeah. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about what you think about The Fiscal Clip, and if you could introduce it for the audience. Well, The Fiscal Cliff is a very funny um, sketch that we did live, and it's just, once again, pulling in politics, but we're seeing it from a different view, and it's um, from a, a comical, but actually true view. So, um, with uh, Bam Bam, Micah Bam Bam, white comedian, acting as uh, President Obama, I mean, it's hilarious. He has it down pat, and you will definitely, definitely get a kick out of it. Well, let's take it to it. Let's not hold you up any, more, any longer. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at The Fiscal Cliff. start talking more about life than just politics. I have brought with me uh, my distinguished gentleman from Virginia. Uh, to my right is Republican uh, Eric Cantor. Oh. And to my left is uh, Democrat uh, Bobby Scottsdale. Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! Uh, first we'll talk about taxes. I will no longer 
uh, create tax cuts for uh, the wealthy. Open up for dialogue, and let's start with uh, Mr. Cantor. Yes, Ms. Bush, Trump. I cannot afford to pay a higher tax rate. This N-word has lost his mind. She called me an N-word. Now you know this would severely cut into Fluffy's budget. His shoes cost $60,000, and at this rate, he would be forced to wear them more than once. Or I, I would have to downgrade him to Louis Vuitton, or maybe even Gucci, or, or, or Coach. <laughs> you tell him my husband and I won't stand for such a thing. <sighs> now, sweetheart, I understand your pain, but the American people do deserve a compromise because the American people deserve to be represented in a fair and equitable way. Because that's what America is about. It's about freedom, <coughs> compromise, <coughs> apple pie. What? <laughs> However, seeing I have some, some answers right in front of me, I vote that we will not compromise on this bill, not today, not ever, because it is an unfair burden on the American taxpayer. So I vote to extend the Bush tax cuts. Thank you, Mr. Cantor. Uh, and you have 45 seconds, Mr. Scottsdale. Well, the Listen, American- As long as they don't mess with my tax return, they good. But if I see any adjustments to me being able to claim my, my refund check, or, or me being able to claim my dependables, a bitch and my dependables, gonna make our way to DC for some furniture moving. Y'all know, show sure will. Uh, Sirakwa, it's, it's dependables. It's dependence, it's dependence. I'm confused. It's dependence. And you don't, do you have, do you have any kids? I don't have no kids, but I do have dependables, and we depended on you to say some shit for all of us. The American people uh, feel as though feel as though it's, what he said was some bullshit. There you go. And um, and that we should not mess with their income tax refund. I go. vote that we uh, we continue to tax the wealthy. No. Way. Uh, uh, I do want to let the American people know that I will no longer let anyone fear uh, receiving their tax refunds uh, for yourself or uh, for your kids. And dependables. And dependables. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Now, let's move along. Uh, let's talk about uh, entitlements. Uh, I don't think that as Americans, we should be able to cut entitlements. Uh, we definitely cannot cut things such as um, homes, uh, things such as medical care. And, and food stamps. Don't, don't forget the food stamps. <laughs> And food stamps. I really think we can do this. No, we cannot. Yes, we can. You better shut up. Sirocco. Sirocco. We, we will handle this, Sirocco. Okay. Okay. Speaking okay. on entitlements, I open the floor up again to Mr. Cantor. Cantor, Cantor. What the devil are food stamps? You, you can't eat stamps. When you're poor, anything is food. I hear they oh. like the things. Oh, okay. Oh. Oh, I, I vote we cut the food stamp program. It's, it's not like it's food. Yeah, no, it's, it's not. They're stamps. Yeah. Stamps. Thank you. Mr. Scottsdale. Well, the food stamp program allows many American families to have funds to get food for their children. Oh, so, don't forget they, they help me pay my bill. Pay hey, your bill. So <laughs> how, how, how do they help you pay your bill? I gotta tell y'all everything. $200 worth of food stamps. Sell them drinks for $100. A bitch bill thing. <laughs> That's Mr. President, it seems as though the food stamp program is uh, 
good for the economy. Okay. As they seem to, uh, uh, they, they help a bitch pay her bills. I know what he's talking about. I vote we continue the, uh, continue the food stamp program. No, no. This N word is appalling to Fluffy and I. Isn't that right, Fluffy? Yes, it is. I know. What you say, Fluffy? I know. I really wish you could vote too. We would get somewhere. Thank God, Fluffy can't vote. <laughs> uh, in conclusion, I just want to let everyone know in America that, uh, according to this, we've had. I will cut taxes for the wealthy. I feel like it's right. No. I will not <laughs> cut entitlements. I feel the American people need entitlements. <laughs> and I want to assure the American people that these entitlements will not be given to illegal immigrants. You lie. Oh hell no! Did you hear that? Make them go night-night and make them go night-night! Mr. Cantor, I would like to let you know that uh, I am the podium fuss. What is The president of the United Mother... <laughs> ...states. And this here is uh, my second and last term. Now, I do want to let you know, uh, Mr. Oh, Cantor, no, that my wife, Michelle, is ready to play 60 on your ass all up and down Pennsylvania oh, Avenue. What? And in closing, and it is a great weekend, uh, the great Dr. Martin Luther King, so I'll close with some words of his. In this great country, we are free at last, free at last. You cut me off one more time, I'm going to bust your ass. God bless you all, and God bless. The American United States. Bring the cast of Lyric Ave into your home. The Season 10 DVD is now available. Log on to www.thelyricavshow.com today to purchase the DVD and other Lyric Ave merchandise. Advertise your business and reach millions of viewers. For advertising opportunities on the Lyric Ave TV show, contact Sonia Holt, 804-223-0278 or sonia.holt at thelyricavshow.com. The real estate market is once again heating up and it saves you both time and money to consult a professional when making real estate decisions. For my sellers, this means top-level marketing, including video tours and technology to capture every potential buyer in the marketplace. And for my buyers, this means taking the time to explain the buying process from beginning to end and ensuring they are making the right purchase. I'm Rob Ransom, and I look forward to helping you with your next real estate transaction. And we're back. We definitely thank our sponsors. Um, but I'm in the audience once again. You never know where you might not, when you might catch me. I'm in the audience, and I'm who am I with? Tiny's. Who are Tiny's? And Tiny's looks up. Uh, Extremely well. I mean, that's how we do in mean, Lyric Ave TV and the live audience. I mean, you need to get your ticket to the live audience. But since you're not here, I'm here with uh, Tunnies. And Tunnies, we have a live performance that's right here on uh, the audience. Can you all do me a favor and we're going to cut and let you introduce this live performance that you're about to witness? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Miss Tisha Lassane. <laughs> My 
We'll see you next week. Good night. God bless. And as my host would say to you, Booyaka Booyaka. Yeah.